Everybody's ready to go on the fan. New York Sports Radio. Mike's on. Mike's on. He'll get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 1019 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesca on the fan on this Wednesday, the 20th day of June, as we get towards summer, which is a day away, the longest day of the year tomorrow. More daylight tomorrow than any other day of the year, which means the days start getting short already, which is kind of depressing when you think about it. I always thought about that before the summer even starts. Days start getting shorter, but hey, you know, it's a minute here, it's a minute there. A lot to get to today. We'll do some, uh, we're tracking down some Nick rumors, which will always be fun. They're rumors, but they're fun, so we'll put them up. Um, we'll do a little draft stuff. We have Jay Wright. Obviously, there's a lot of Villanova presence in the draft, so we'll, go, we'll talk about his kids. He'll uh, He's traveling, but he'll join us today. Aaron Boone today, talk about the Yankees. We begin with the Mets, and here's, I mean, I'm sure this has been played up. I haven't heard the other shows, but I'm sure it's the theme because how would, how couldn't it be how bad Vargas was? But what struck me again last night was... Not that I, I said yesterday during the show, hey, Mets are going to have to score a lot of runs tonight with Vargas pitching in Colorado. I said that to you yesterday when I talked about the game. We all expected that. Didn't expect anything good. Didn't have a good track history there. But 16 batters, nine hits, seven runs, three homers. And then the manager almost knocks me over with his comments. And I'm like, when does this end? When does this craziness end about just allowing players to just perform like this without even a word? Here's, here is the manager after the Mets try to come back, couldn't get it done, dug a deep hole, the three home runs in the third inning, the whole thing. Asked about Vargas, here's Callaway. No, I think he, I think he's on that role. Uh, <laughs> this was just a little hiccup, uh, like we said in, at Coors Field, and and he did. He's he's pitched really well uh, lately for us. He relies on a, a lot of run on his fastball, the changeup, the depth of the changeup, and uh, here it, that that kind of stuff gets affected a little bit. So uh, you know, you know, we talked about it early in the season. The the key for him is to get the ball down when he needs to get it down. When you come into Coors Field, you tell your pitchers, "Don't worry about what happens here," and you move on. You come in here. You battle all you can, what? and do you forget about it? All right, stop um, it there. Stop it there. Wait a second. What you come into Coors Field. What is, did the Rockies do that? You come into Coors Field. You say, yeah, whatever happens here, what the heck? Come on. Hey, guys, we don't care. Come on. We want to hold this against you. Go out there. Do your best. So what? Your ball didn't break. Your ball didn't dip. You didn't get it down. You gave up nine hits and three bombs in the third inning. And, hey, what the heck? Come on. It's Coors Field. We don't expect anything. How long does this manager get up after games and utter these mindless, ridiculous comments and not hold his players accountable? And look. Here's the sanity. Here's Vargas on his own performance. There's not a whole lot other than they were just bad pitches and they all got hammered. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. There was one honest guy in the building. Vargas. Yeah, he's pitching to an eight and a half ERA. Yeah, he couldn't get you out. But at least he was hammered. At least he was honest. I got hammered. I stunk. I got hammered. The manager, he's on a roll. The guy's ERA is 8.62. He's on a roll. And, A, it's Coors Field. We don't expect anything. Hey, you know what? Keep him under 10. We'll do the best we can. So we'll lose 10-6. At least we got some. You know what he said at the game? Hey, at least we got some runs. Great. Hey, come on. I know he only pitched two and a third, but he did get a call. Listen, he got seven of 16 out. What do you want? Everything? He got seven of the 16 guys out. What do you want? Miracles? It's Coors Field. What do you expect? He's on a roll when he came in. This is a guy this year whose ERA is 8.60. Last night, he faced 16 batters, more got hits than he got out, and he gave up three home runs in the third inning. Now, 
to be fair to Vargas for one second, he did get a couple of bad breaks in the first inning. Nimmo lost the fly ball. There was a CNI single. So he did give up a couple of flares early in the game. That was not the case after the first inning. So in the first inning, he did get a little bit of, of a bad break on a couple of those hits, to be fair. But he did give up nine hits to 16 batters and three home runs and said he was horrible. He did. But the manager said, no, 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 this is cause. We had no expectations. <laughs> Come on. I tell my pitchers, whatever you do a cause, stays a cause. Ignore it. And that means nothing. We move on. Maybe we won't even count it, as a matter of fact. I'll see if I can get the league to wipe it out. What I, I understand this guy, the first time we heard him, he said he was going to love the players. But, I mean, when does it stop? When are they held to some kind of standard? If you can go out there and get your doors blown off and the manager says, hey, well, I thought he missed with a couple of pitches and uh, it's cause. You know, come on, it's cause. So tonight, Lugo, it's cause. I know you realize two, but if you give him eight, nine runs tonight, it's cause. Come on, what the heck? It's cause. Have a cause. It is cause. It's Colorado. I don't even know if it's cause anymore. It's not cause anymore, right? What is it now? It's not even cause, right? It's Colorado. It's not cause anymore, right? Is it still? It's not cause anymore, right? Something else. Whatever it is. The point is, they can't get anybody out. That's the point. You know, whatever the name of the stadium is at the moment. What is it now? Oh, it is still cause? Okay. I thought, they ch- I thought someone else bought the name. I thought someone else did. Um, so the Mets, behind Vargas, and behind a manager who are just... Uh, is out there in the ozone somewhere. I have I have no idea where he is. They move on. With Lugo tonight, who actually has done a very good job this year. And they at least, you know, had a little offense last night. If you want to look for, you know, you want to look for silver linings. You know, they did have a... Plawecki got two hits, if you want to be, be excited. I mean, uh, I'm sure the manager had to be overjoyed with that. Or the fact that, you know... Cabrera got a couple of knocks, and they actually scored a couple of runs. So, hey, I guess that's okay. They got that done. Smith was in left field. He looked a little lost. But, hey, what the heck? They got to put him in there last night. I thought that Flores actually made a couple of nice plays at first base. But we come back to Vargas and the fact that he got absolutely pounded. And that's where we go. Now, the Yankees last night, a uh, very matter-of-fact, very efficient, Good night for the kiddies, whether you're talking about Ramon, whether you're talking about uh, Andohar, you want to talk about uh, any of them, you know, Torres, Andohar, Sprinkle and Hicks, the top of the lineup, as the Yankees go on to a, a win over the Mariners and uh, hit a couple of home runs and do a nice job. Tonight it is uh, Loa Siga against what used to be King Felix. You know, not King Felix anymore. I think he's in there somewhere. I don't know where he is, but he's hiding in there somewhere. This King Felix is in that body somewhere. I don't know where he went uh, because, you know, his ERA now is no longer, you know, 1.18. His ERA is now 5.44. But he's King Felix. So there we go. And he will be on the mound tonight as the Yankees and uh, they meet and the uh, and the. Uh, Mariners meet again. Mariners got a decent team. I mean, they have played well this year. They've they've won a lot of games. They've won a lot of uh, close games. They've been great in one run games. They've gotten some good pitching. They've caught the ball well. They've done everything right, and they've even overcome uh, Cano, uh, where Gordon's played very well at second base. So that's where the Mariners are as they get ready to take on the Yankees again. Uh, we turn our attention, obviously. Uh, we will have Aaron Boone today at five o'clock, and then we have some draft stuff. I want to track down. There's a uh, uh, draft. One of one of the guys, young guys that works for the Athletic, Michael Scotto, has got this big draft story, big draft rumor. So I figured, hey, we we'll let him come on and we'll let him, then we we'll put Brendan Brown on and analyze it. He's got the Knicks trading up for the four and basically picking up a big contract. I'll get into that in a couple of minutes with him. He's going to come on, tell us about that and all those rumors. Nothing like a couple of juicy rumors before the draft to get everybody excited. If the Knicks got up to the four, uh, what would be left on the board? 
Would they go up to the four for a specific player? At nine, what should they draft tomorrow? Nine leaves them, puts them, you know, there's a million places to go at nine for a player. You can go in five or six different places. Uh, is there a guy left that could be wonderful? Uh, we'll see. Uh, Jay Wright on his players, he has uh, four of them uh, in the draft. And you know what? He's got some interesting guys. He really does. He's got a, a couple of very interesting guys, I think. You know, Spellman's a guy who came out of nowhere. When I saw him in December to where he was at the end of the season, boy, he has improved so much. You know, he got himself in great shape. He's a, he's a guy who really, I bet you, you know what, down the road, it'll take him a couple of years, but he'll become a very useful NBA player. He really will. The other three guys, well, you know, one's going to be taken very high, and the other two are very interesting players who I think have more upside than a lot of people think. So we'll get to all that with the uh, the, the national champion coach who's been traveling around. So Jay will join us in the four o'clock hour. So we got a lot to do. We get it all rolling right after this.